Hey everybody, what's up? So, I, uh, I wanted to read something to you. I thought I'd do a, a vlog and style one of my favorite information purveyors, Miss Ella. And so, uh, I'm going to read this and, and uh, say a few words and, and then uh, you can give me your thoughts, comments if you like. I knelt on a patch of high desert sand far away from any road, beseeching whatever gods may be to help me make fire for the first time. It was a lucent late afternoon at Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in southern Utah, and I was attempting to survive the second day of a crash course customized for me by the Boulder Outdoor Survival School boss amid the worldwide financial meltdown. I picked up a spindle I'd carved from a stick of sagebrush, looped it around the string of a makeshift river birch bow, and using my right hand, put its lower point into the burn hole of a V-notched sagebrush hearthboard. With my left hand, I grasped a sandstone rock and pressed its pitch-lubricated socket crater down on the upper point of the spindle. Dave Nessie, a 42, a veteran boss survival skills instructor, with curly brown hair and fingertips wrapped in first aid tape, stopped me right there. He pushed the arch of my left foot over the top of the hearth board, then he jerked my right leg around at a 90 degree angle to form a triangulated base for my lower body. Start off slow so you don't wear yourself out, Dave advised. I slid the bow back and forth as if I were playing a miniature cello. The spindle spun to no apparent avail. Susan Richards, 49, another boss instructor wearing jeans and a straw cowboy hat, exhorted me to increase the length of my stroke. More bows, Susan cried. You've got to use the whole string. At last I saw a wisp of gray smoke rise from the hearth board. Half a second later, my right forearm went into spasm. I let go of the bow and tumbled over backward, moaning in agony. Dave burst out laughing. Stop whining, Susan commanded. You've almost got it. For the ensuing 60 seconds, I stared up at a wild western sky that seemed to be bigger and bluer than forever, contemplating the precariousness of our present age. Almost, I realized, is not good enough anymore. Forget about the American dream of everlasting upward mobility. With the global banking system in shambles and stocks and housing prices tanking despite government intervention, mobility is plunging and mere survival is no longer just a laughing matter. Hey, don't take my bear market bankrupted word for it. Just ask Barton Figgs, founder of Traxxas Partners, a New York-based hedge fund, the former chief global, global strategist for now imperiled iconic Wall Street firm Morgan Stanley. In Big's book, Wealth, War, and Wisdom, published last fe February before the credit markets collapsed, he predicted the imminent return of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and barbarians at the gate of civilization, a call that now appears, appears to be off not far off the mark. I'm no prophet, but I knew the barbarians were going to come again in a different disguise than they used in the past. Biggs told me over the phone right before I left for survival school. But I didn't know at the time that they were going to come disguised as derivatives traders. What's been happening on Wall Street is even more barbaric than I imagined. In his book, Big urges readers to acquire remote safe haven farms stocked with food, fertilizer, wine, and medicine. You should assume the possibility of a breakdown of the civilized infrastructure, he warns. Before even going further, a few rounds over the approaching brigands' heads would probably be a compelling pers persuader that there are easier farms to pillage, he writes. Brigands tend to be cowards. While America's collective sense of dread has spiked with the recent economic unpleasantness, it's been building for years. The 9-11 attacks, Hurricane Katrina, reports of climate change, and murmurs about peak oil have all darkened the national mood. And Hollywood has been peddling dystopic fantasies for decades. The War of the Worlds, Mad Max, and the recent William Smith blockbuster, I Am Legend. Considering all the enduring popularity of Cormac McCarthy's best-selling 2006 novel, The Road soon to be released as a film. It's a book I've seen in the hands of more than one of my bombastic Wall Street buddies, perhaps because they project themselves into the role of the protagonist, a pistol-packing man scavenging the cannibalistic, ash-encrusted landscape of a post-apocalyptic America with his son in tow. What's the bravest thing you ever did, the boy asks the man. The man spits bloody phlegm on the road and replies, getting up this morning. The anecdotal evidence is sober sobering. Survivalism. Once widely disdained as a wacko cult people by the likes of Theodore, the Unabomber Kaczynski, and Timothy McVeigh has begun to attract increasing numbers of ordinary citizens. An oil industry friend says he put 95% of his personal wealth in treasury bills, even as he keeps trying to raise money for new drilling deals. An executive at a mid-sized financial services company 
recently reported that the firm's president had bought two cases of 9mm ammunition because the currency in a new world order could be ammo. A hedge fund manager told me he fantasized about changing his identity if the credit crisis devolves into the kind of breakdown of the civil infrastructure bigs forecasts. They're going to come after guys like me first, he says. Maybe I'll tell them I'm just a journalist. And then there's my pal, Victor Ayad, 51, a notoriously contrarian property fund manager based in Austin, Texas, who has actually been prospering amid the fiscal meltdown. No matter, he too is prepared for the worst. I am in possession of a rather large collection of small firearms and ammunition, and I have a large basement, he says. If anarchy does arrive, I plan to buy a couple hundred cases of good scotch, stay liquid, and pray a lot. Very powerful um, writing. Uh, paints a very uh, stark picture of uh, harsh reality in our economic times and the possibilities, um, the great possibilities for uh, a, a, in, uh, a future of, of, of unknown origin. <laughs> um, I happen to be at my local um, pharmacy, uh, not getting pharmaceuticals, but something else, and, and I happened to be waiting around for a few minutes, and I looked, perused the magazine section, and I it just happened to catch my eye on the front, and I was really surprised at the source or the publication it came from. Men's Vogue tells a tale of the apocalypse boot camp. So uh, I, I I was <laughs> kind of taken aback by that. Um, normally in, in a publication that, as you all know, like many others, is just uh, just um, full of, of advertising vomit and um, consumerist uh, shite, if you will. Uh, but it was amazing to me to see an article like that in a publication like this. Of course, it's a men's vogue, so... Um, I think that had a little something to do with it, but um, it was interesting. So I, I, I guess that there's the reality of some of these things, especially him talking about um, some of the individuals he knows, uh, some of these people on Wall Street, um, some of these financial individuals that, that see uh, the reality of it every day and know how bad it is and how bad it could potentially get. So. Um, it was it was really interesting to see this, and and I'm interested to find out if anyone else had found articles in places uh, they didn't expect to. So I guess it's um, leaking ever so slowly into the mainstream. And uh, even though I realize that there are a lot of people um, that are going to be blindsided still by this um, as things get worse, and they will get worse, unfortunately. So um, that's why we need to keep putting information out there and, and telling as many people as possible so maybe we can uh, many more people we can wake as many people up as possible so anyway I found that interesting uh, give me your thoughts your feedbacks um, your feedback so thanks peace